Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And you never know where Stephen may go. And now, here's Stephen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. It's good to be back. I haven't I haven't been on here for a couple days, so I'm glad you're here. And ladies and gentlemen, we are entering some crazy times right now. I haven't been on here since they officially announced the Trump indictment, so I haven't had a chance to give my opinion. But I will tell you, I was not sleeping on the job. I have been researching this. I've been kind of sitting back like a fly on the wall, trying to gather all the intel. I've been deep behind enemy lines, infiltrating the leftist Twitter, infiltrating the leftist Pravda media. I have been doing the dirty work for my listeners, you guys. So I have gathered a lot of information. I'm just trying to get a feel for what the Democrats' plan is here because everybody knows that everything these people do is strategic. Everything these people do is for a reason. There is a method for their madness. And that is why they announced this indictment when Congress was in session or when Congress was in recess. They'll be gone for the next two weeks. There's a reason why they do everything. And I think we know that by now. But I have been a fly on the wall gathering all the information, trying to get a trying to get a feel for what is going on. And that's just what we do as conservatives and Republicans. That's what I, I've always been that way. That is basically why I left the Democrat Party. I left the Democrat Party in 2008 when I voted for Obama. I did not vote for a Democrat since then, and I'll probably never vote for a Democrat again in my lifetime. And that is why I have always had my bearings in the right direction, and I've always kept my feet on solid ground when it comes to politics. And that's basically why I find myself kind of politically homeless, but I have certainly found a pretty good foothold in the conservative group. So I have I have an idea what I think's going on. If you listen to a couple shows a couple episodes ago, I made a show called The Trump Indictment is a Distraction, and I have not wearied from that opinion. I have not strayed from that opinion whatsoever. I do indeed think this entire thing is a distraction because ladies and gentlemen, if you look around us, this country, this world, this country is falling apart. It is falling apart. It is about ready to bust at the seams between the bank, between the brink of World War III, between our currency, other countries forming alliances. It is getting insane, folks. And so it is no surprise that they had to come out and put Trump at the front of the conversation because they know that he is the biggest distraction that they have. They use him as a political tool. and. They're using Donald Trump as a distraction to distract you from the Biden administration's failures because things are bad, folks. Their plan is to implement a totalitarian, tyrannical regime. That's what they want. That's what's going on, folks. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to implement tyranny because, ladies and gentlemen, we are staring tyranny right in the face right now. I want you guys to know that we are indeed the beginning stages of most likely some kind of war or conflict of some sort. And we are at the beginning stages and we are witnessing the fall of democracy as we know it. What this indictment does has just changed this country's path forever. It is extremely dark days we are entering because of this indictment, but I don't want people to get down on themselves. I don't want people to get panicked. Do not panic, folks. Do not give up. This is what they want. They want you to give up. They want to crush you. They want to crush your morale. Do not let them do that. Everything is going to be okay. Donald Trump is going to be fine. His attorney has came out and said yesterday or today, I believe that most likely this is going to get dismissed before it even enters the trial stage. So, they're not going to get what they want. I, and, you know, that was one of the things that I did when I infiltrated uh, when I infiltrated the enemy, when I infiltrated the leftist Twitter. 
folks, these people are insane. They're like, lock them up forever. You know, I mean, almost everything but hang the guy in public square. Like, seriously, these people are sick. There is something wrong with these people. And all this stemmed from the 2016 election when they could not accept the 2016 election. They could not accept that Donald Trump won the election fair and square, and they could not accept that he was their president for the next four years. And he was a good president indeed. A good person? I don't know. I don't know the man personally. But a president? There's, I, I, there hasn't been a better one in my lifetime. So he brought this country four years of peace and prosperity. I don't know what else you can ask for in a president. He did exactly what a president's supposed to do. I, there's you know, obviously some mistakes that he made, mainly his personnel. He did have a couple blind spots. For, for the most part, folks, his policy, his leadership was impeccable. The best I've seen in my lifetime, and I've not just my lifetime. I, I've talked to ninety-year-olds that say he's the best president they've seen in their lifetime, better than Reagan. So I I believe them when they say that he's certainly the best in my lifetime. But folks, this is a giant distraction from the failures of this administration, from the failures of the Democrat Party, because. The world is falling apart around us, and the only thing they want you to focus on is Donald Trump. So I was listening to Tucker Carlson the other night. Glenn Beck was on there giving a speech. It was one of the best speeches that I've heard in a long time. He nailed it to a T. I love Glenn Beck. I don't listen to him as much anymore as I used to because I have my own show. So that's one of the negative parts about having your own show is you kind of lose touch with all the other shows that you like to listen to, but that's fine because I'm here. I'm, I'm giving you guys all the information and I'm giving you guys the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth and I'm going to keep you people informed because informed people make good decisions and uninformed people make bad decisions. And right now we are experiencing what happens when you make bad decision after bad decision after bad decision by uninformed people. So Glenn Beck made us made a speech the other night and it was so great. I had to bring it here to you guys. I'm sure you might have heard it maybe, but it was an excellent speech. I cut it down for time, but I definitely it was definitely something I wanted my listeners to hear because it nails it to a T. So it's a little bit long, so just bear with me. I did cut it. I edited it for time, but I gave you a big chunk of what I, I think is the most important part about this speech. So here we go. Check this out. <laughs> So let me, I, I've got a couple of things here for you. Um, let me just go through. I'm going to bring a, I think, a different perspective to this. We have the banking crisis. They say it's fine. It's just beginning. We, um, yesterday, we had the Saudis and uh, Brazil and um, uh, China enter a deal to where the petrodollar is over. Brazil and China are going to uh, trade in their own currency. That's the beginning of the end of our currency. That means a dollar collapse. That yes. means we become Venezuela. We will have war with China. We will have war with Russia and Iran. Uh, we have the restrict bill. We have social media and our NSA and everybody else in bed with each other, silencing people. We, of course, have the raccoon dogs, which we all know is bullcrap. Um, and now this week we have a new uh, gun grab that they're trying to do. Um, Biden and his family taking money from the Chinese. What do you think this Donald Trump thing is really all about? The American, the America that we knew, the fundamental transformation that started in 2008 is finished. We are no longer viewed as a superpower. We are now a an elderly, we're Joe Biden just walking into the twilight. What this is all about, I believe, is trying to inflame this country. Is in They've wanted violence from the right from the beginning. They can't yeah. wait it. They need it. Because if we strike out Look at January 6th, the day they're letting the shaman out of prison because it was all trumped up. Thank you, Tucker Carlson, for uh, uh, revealing this. The day they're letting him out, 
They do this to Donald Trump. They want you to strike out. Why? Because then they can close the cage. I'm going to make another prediction for you, uh, Tucker. You said I got it right. Well, everything I've been talking about since 08, this is the time. I'm going to make a prediction. By 2025, we are going to be at war. We are going to have a new dollar, a currency that it probably is coming from the central bank. We'll have a currency collapse uh, and we will live in a virtual police state. I know that might sound crazy to a lot of people. It's not far off. The, the Bill of Rights is gone. Nobody is paying attention. Where are the Republicans? Where are the decent Democrats that can see this is, this is insanity? B Donald Trump, the reason why this is going to um, help Donald Trump, and that's why I don't think they're doing it so he can't run. They're doing it because they want people to strike out. Please turn to God, repent, pray for our country, pray for peace. Put on the full armor of God. But here's what's really what they miss. Donald Trump is not even a person anymore. He is a symbol. He is a symbol of the average everyday guy that keeps getting screwed every single time. Watches other people screw up big banks, screw up their companies and get away with it. He's, they see people all the time doing stuff that they know if they did, they'd be in prison for 20 years. But because they're not part of the elite, they get away with it. Donald Trump has taken arrow after arrow, and that's why this is the way the average American feels tonight. Yeah. I hope that there's a few Republic or Democrats out there, but this guy has been taking the bullets for the average person now for years. And people on the right feel like he's the only guy that really gets what the people are feeling. And it's, uh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna end well. Uh, for the Democrats in the next election. It's just not. I don't know if Donald Trump is the winner or not, but I will tell you this. You're not going to stop a hundred million people. This country is in shambles. And there's going to be a hundred million people that will walk on broken glass and through fire to vote for someone other than this corrupt banana republic administration. Yep. That's me, folks. I will be voting for Donald Trump. I don't know if I told you this, but I was actually leaning towards Ron DeSantis in the beginning of the election cycle. And then when this happened, boom, Donald Trump is my guy now, and I will absolutely crawl over broken glass and through fire to pull that lever for Donald Trump. Why? Because Glenn Beck absolutely nailed this speech. He absolutely nailed exactly what the people are thinking. He absolutely nailed everything about this. And people are sick and tired of this government, of this just super elite group of people this political class, this elite class of people getting to do whatever they want with absolutely no consequences. So when Democrats sit there and say over and over again that there's nobody above the law, what they mean to say is there's nobody on the Republican side that is above the law because they have everybody on their side that is above the law, like Sam Bankman Freed, the guy that just lost billions of dollars in illegal stock trading and crypto trading and all that craziness. Yeah, have you heard anything from him lately? Nope. Why? Because he votes the right way. Okay. You have Eric Holder, who didn't show up for a subpoena to appear in front of Congress. Didn't go. Did he get arrested? Nope. But guess who did for doing the exact same thing? Steve Bannon. Okay. You have Hillary Clinton that did the exact same thing they just indicted Donald Trump for. Hillary Clinton paid Christopher Steele for the Russian dossier, that fake 
phony dossier with the PP tape and the hoax and all that stupid stuff that was all paid for by Hillary Clinton using campaign funds. So she's above the law. You have Hunter Biden on camera, on a computer. And Hunter Biden's laptop has pictures, photos, documents, receipts, contacts, metadata, everything you need to tie Hunter Biden to a crime. Where's he at? Nobody knows. Selling blow paint art to Chinese art dealers. You have his dad, his father, Joe Biden, dropping classified documents all over the country, all throughout Delaware. Where is he at? Nobody really knows. Is he above the law? Apparently. You know, when they sit there and they say, oh, well, it was the amount of documents that's the problem. No, folks. No, it's not. The guy should not have had documents, classified documents in the first place. And if you want to talk about the amount of documents he had, you know, finding him in his garage next to his Corvette, finding him all over Delaware. It's like documents fell out of the bottom of his pants wherever this guy went. Well, they just found like 300,000 documents at his at the University of Delaware in that fake business that he had, whatever that place was. So I don't want to hear about nobody's above the law. Of course there is, folks. You want another example of somebody's above the law? Whoever is in... Uh, Alvin Bragg's district attorney's office that leaked this that leaked this indictment information. That's illegal, folks. I don't see that person being locked up. I don't see that person being indicted. So, yes, folks, there are people above the law and they're Democrats. There's nobody on the Republican side that is above the law. So let's just get that over with right here, right now. And Glenn Beck also made an excellent statement when he said they are poking us in our chest and saying, yeah, what are you going to do about it? And ladies and gentlemen, we cannot fall for their trap. It is a trap. They are trying to rile people up so that they can close the cage so that they can round everyone up and claim we're all domestic terrorists and they are going to start locking Republicans up for being Republican. I promise you we are entering that stage of a tyrannical regime where we have a rogue Justice Department, a rogue intelligence agencies and all the other three letter agencies and a rogue government that are completely, completely out to get their political rivals. So everybody needs to stay frosty, man. Stay cool. Do not do anything crazy. Go protest. But I want to tell you, if you go protest, just be aware that these, the FBI, you're going to have people like Ray Epps and all the other agitators that we know were at January 6th now with that newly released footage from Tucker Carlson. So just know that there will be people there waiting and hoping you do something stupid and not even waiting and hoping, enticing people to be violent. So they can lock you up and throw away the key. So just know if you go to protest, that is your right. Absolutely do it. But just keep your head on a swivel, man. This is the message they are trying to send to Republicans. This is the message the authoritarian, totalitarian, tyrannical regime is trying to send to the Republicans. If you go up against us, we will arrest you. We will take your freedom away. We will lock you up and throw away the key. And just like Glenn Beck said, the same day they announced the Trump indictment, they let that guy go, the MAGA shaman or whatever the dude was with the Viking horns, after they released the footage that Democrats and the Nancy Pelosi handpicked January 6th committee had the entire time. They had this footage. They knew what was in that footage, but they lied to the American people. They edited that footage and they showed it in a manner that would make it look like it was a violent, violent insurrection. That's what they did, folks. They took a riot from the Capitol and they made and tr they made it into a violent insurrection. And that is not what it was. Was it was there acts of violence? Yes. But there was nuances. There was nuances to that to the January 6th. That entire thing was a setup, folks. And now the more and more footage, the more and more footage that gets leaked out, the more and more undercover agents we see that were at the January 6th protest trying to incite violence. Not trying to, they were inciting violence. You have people like Ray Epps. Is Ray Epps above the law? I think so. Because they got him on camera lying to Congress saying that he left when indeed he was there for a half hour after he told Congress he left. So listen, folks, we are not dealing with a normal set of rules here. We are dealing with 
a one-sided game. These people are out to get Republicans. They are trying to send a message. They are looking you in the face and they're saying, yeah, we're arresting Republicans. What are you going to do about it? That's what they're doing. So people need to realize that Glenn Beck is absolutely correct when he says the entire country is in shambles right now. And it absolutely is. There is everything that is falling apart around us. And the only thing these people can do is indict Donald Trump for some bogus legal theory that they think they're going to get an, a, a conviction on. They're not getting a conviction, folks, because they know they're just using it as a distraction. OK, as far as war. Folks, it's not good. It is not good at all. I got an article here from CNN Politics stated March 31st. Hat tip to Haley Britsky. Top U.S. general says increased partnership between Iran, Russia and China will make them, quote, problematic for years to come. Yep. The weakness of this administration, the absolute failures has caused all of this pain and misery on everybody. Now people know why you cannot have people like Joe Biden as your commander in chief. Now you know why what happens when you put an illegitimate guy in there to be the most powerful person on the planet. Now you know what happens when the United States government and the intel agencies and the media and the corporate big tech social media platforms collude with one another to rig an election. This is what happens. You have complete catastrophe. Okay? And we all know it. So here we go. Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff General Mark Milley told lawmakers Wednesday that China, Russia, and Iran would be a problem for the U.S. for many years to come, as the three are working more closely together. Speaking before the House Armed Services Committee alongside Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, Milley said Russia and China are getting closer together. Quote, I wouldn't call it a true full alliance in the real meaning of that word, but we are seeing them moving closer together, and that's troublesome. And then Iran is the third problem. So those three countries together are going to be problematic for many years to come, I think, especially Russia and China because of their capability. While the U.S. has made clear for years now that the three countries are focuses of the military, particularly China and Russia, tensions with all three have been on the rise in recent months and even weeks. Thank you, Joe Biden, and thank you, Democrats, for putting us in this situation. You see what happens when you vote for somebody like Joe Biden? I warned everybody before this election. I said Donald Trump may not be the best person. He is a flawed man. But we cannot vote for Joe Biden. Voting for Joe Biden is hitting the self-destruct button. Donald Trump was not worth all this pain and agony we are feeling, folks. Getting rid of Donald Trump was not worth it. This is a complete disaster on every level. Now we're looking at World War III. We have what, one, two, three, and then if you listen to my previous episode, I talk about Africa, South Africa joining naval combat operations over there in the South China Sea with China. So we have all these countries combining forces for what, folks? And I'm, I'm dead serious when I say this. Are these the people you want to go to World War III with? I don't think so, folks. I don't want to go to war, period. But I sure in the hell don't want to go to war with Joe Biden as a commander in chief. This guy destroys everything he touches. Everything he touches, he destroys. I don't see how people can't see that by now. It is absolutely insane. In fact, I think people are starting to see it, and I, I have a reason as to why later that I'll explain to you. All right, back to the article. The U.S. continues to help fund Ukraine's defense against Russia's invasion, which Milley said Wednesday in, in and in itself is a war crime. Tensions with China rose recently following a suspected Chinese spy balloon's travel over the continental U.S. It was ultimately shot down by the U.S. military off the eastern coast of the country. Chinese Minister of National Defense Wei Fang refused to call, refused to take a call with Austin regarding the incident. Yeah, that was another that was another debacle from the Joe Biden administration, letting a Chinese spy balloon traverse our entire country for almost a week before shooting it down. What kind of intel did they gather off that balloon? Does anybody know? What were they doing? 
How how was that balloon allowed to traverse the whole country? Did Hunter Biden break a deal with the Chinese president to allow that balloon to talk his dad out of shooting the balloon down for five days? How much money did he make off that deal? I'm just saying, folks, I'm not saying that's what happened, but I'm just saying these are the kinds of things you need to think about when you have a president that's as compromised as Joe Biden and the Biden family is. This is the kind of stuff you have to think about. So these are the people pe- uh, the Democrats want to go to war with. OK. All right. Uh, the article continues. And just last week, the U.S. launched retaliatory strikes against Iran backed groups in Syria after a suspected Iranian drone struck a facility housing U.S. personnel, killing an American contractor and injuring five service members following the U.S. strike. Additional rocket and drone attacks were carried out targeting U.S. and coalition personnel in Syria. So now we have Americans dying, American contractors dying. Listen, for the people that think we are not in war right now, I'm sorry, but you're just wrong. We are in war. The United States government is hiring massive amounts of government contractors to go help Ukraine. We are not in war as a sense to the Congress declaring war. But I'm telling you, folks, we are in war. Our stockpile munitions are draining faster than we can replenish them. We are dwindling our military stockpile right now. It's insane. And I have an article discussing that, too, we may talk about here in a little bit. This is what this entire indictment is trying to cover up. The I had a – and it's so weird. I had a um, – well, here, you know what? Let's finish the rest of this article. Millie warned during a hearing on Tuesday that Iran could, quote, produce enough fizzle material for a nuclear weapon in less than two weeks and ultimately create a nuclear weapon within several months thereafter. What? So Iran is on the brink of having nuclear weapons, folks. My, my, my. What has this administration got us into? The United States military has developed multiple options for our national leadership to consider if or when Iran decides to develop a nuclear weapon, he said. Folks, Iran already has nuclear weapons. I'm telling you right now they do. They've been working on these things for months, for years. They already got them, folks. I'm telling you, if they don't have them already, they are surely weeks away from getting it, just like Millie stated. Uh, The article continues, but he added Wednesday that China and Russia specifically have the means to threaten our interests and our way of life and mark the first time that the U.S. is facing two major nuclear powers. And while Milley also said Wednesday that China's nuclear capabilities are not matched with those of the U.S., he added they are still significant. We are probably not going to be able to do anything to stop, slow down, disrupt, or destroy the Chinese nuclear development program that they have projected out. Over the next 10 to 20 years, Millie said, they're going to do that in accordance with their own plan. And there's very little leverage, I think, that we can do externally to prevent that from happening. So there you go, folks. To all the Democrats out there, was this worth it? Was this worth it? Is all this worth it, getting rid of Donald Trump? I don't know. That's why I ask you. Sometimes when I read these people's comments, I'm just like, you people are insane. They are completely blinded by hatred of Donald Trump, that they can't see any of this stuff that's going on. And the reason I say that is yesterday I had a friend of mine who's a lefty, big lefty, came up nice, super nice dude. Uh, He's, you know, he's my he's my friend. He's my coworker. You know, he comes up to me and he goes, man, all this stuff that's happening, the, the Trump indictment, he's like, screw Donald Trump. He was like, all this is a distraction. He's like, did you hear about the all the craziness in the war that's happening right now over in Russia and Ukraine? He's like, yeah, they're all this the Trump thing's a distraction. All these countries are teaming up. We're about ready to get smoked. That's what he said. I'm like, dude, welcome to the party, brother. Welcome to the party. I mean, he's still, you know, it, but the thing is is this it's like the clouds parted and a ray of sunshine blinded this guy. You know, blinded him And was like, welcome to reality. It's like somebody unplugged him from the Matrix. When I heard him say that, I was stunned. And I simply told him, I know it's a distraction. And there's a lot of other stuff that's happening too. I was like, did you hear about the collapse of our currency that's getting ready to happen? He goes, yeah. I was like, you know what? I understand you don't like Donald Trump. Donald Trump doesn't bother me. 
but people need to wake up. And he goes, I know, man, I know people need to wake up. And then he started talking about why it's so bad, the, why the war is bad and how all this Trump indictment stuff's a cover up. It is a cover up, folks. And everybody sees it. Like I said, with the poll that came out Wednesday, 62 percent of Americans believe that this indictment is politically motivated and majority of Americans know that what we're seeing right now is absolutely devastating to the rule of law. Everybody knows deep down inside that what is happening to Donald Trump is only the beginning. It is leading this country into very, very dark days. And not only that, but this is why it's so vital. All these countries have been watching us since the day Joe Biden put his hand on that Bible and salivating for Joe Biden to mess up. Why? So that they can take advantage of a weak leader and so they can take advantage of America. And they got their green light the moment that Afghanistan withdrawal happened. The moment Joe Biden screwed that entire thing up, they knew what they had to do. They knew what they could get away with. And that's exactly what they did. And not only that, but somehow, some way. Somebody convinced Joe Biden to relieve sanctions from Russia and the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which was a direct, a direct signal to Vladimir Putin to greenlight his invasion of Ukraine. How do we know that? Because Zelensky said it. He said it himself in a hearing that if Joe Biden releases the Nord Stream 2 sanctions, if Joe Biden releases sanctions from Russia, then Vladimir Putin was going to invade. Joe Biden did it anyways, even though everybody was pleading him not to. And that's exactly what happened. He invaded Ukraine. And here we are two years later in a looks like the brink of World War Three. And folks, nobody, nobody is ready for that because we have not we've never had World War Three with nuclear weapons before, folks. So we're talking a, an extinction level event here if this ends up happening. But I've been saying for months now that we are at the beginning stages of World War III. World War II did not happen in five years. It was going on long before we got involved. We were in it for five years and we ended that by dropping the atomic bomb. But people need to realize there was a lot of time leading up to the events of World War II. OK, but I think people think of World War Two as like a, a one hour history documentary where they just throw it all out there in an hour and they think that's the entire war. No, folks, there are so many events that happened, so many things that happened that led up to World War Two. And I'm telling you guys right now, we are in the beginning days of another great war. And not only that, but you have article after article telling us that the United States is not prepared to go to war. It is absolutely not prepared to go to war. America, back in World War II, we were on solid ground before going into World War II. You know, we our banks weren't collapsing. You know, we had the crash of 29, but we were coming out of that. You know, we had the Great Depression, but we were coming out of We were actually in decent times. We're, we are not ready. We are not in that position right now, folks. Absolutely not. So I want to I have an article here that is actually kind of concerning U.S. top general on U.S. ammunition stockpile and prospect of Ukraine winning the war. So he and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin faced repeated questioning from members of Congress this week about the impact of war is having on the Pentagon as it supplies Ukraine with much of the ammunition it needs to fend off the Russian forces. They and senior and senior army leaders said the conflict has pushed the U.S. to increase production rates and reevaluate how much of a stockpile is really needed as tensions with China and Russia continue to rise. Quote, if there was a war on the Korean Peninsula or great power war between the United States and Russia or the United States in China, the consumption rates would be off the charts, Milley said in a testimony to the House Armed Service Committee on Wednesday. Quote, so I am concerned. I know the secretary is. We have got a ways to go to make sure our stockpiles are prepared for the real contingencies. Folks, how did we go from peace in the Middle East to the brink of World War III all in two and a half years? You got to be kidding me. And when I look at my friend, when he said 
that he could see that the Trump indictment was a distraction. Down the road, I heard him talking to somebody else, and he said that he really hopes that Kamala Harris could become president. <laughs> I can't, I can't, folks. I don't understand for the life of me. I've been researching for a long, long time, trying to piece together why is it Democrats and the leftists cannot correlate the bad things happening to us right now, the bad things happening around the globe. How can they not correlate this to the almost the exact month Joe Biden took office? How do they not connect the two? It's absolutely bizarre to me. So there's two things that I think are happening. A, they're just dumb and they just absolutely are too blinded or too intellectually lazy to find out how they're correlated. Or two, they know it's correlated to Joe Biden, but they don't want to admit that they were wrong. And ladies and gentlemen, I pray to God. I pray to God Kamala Harris does run for president because this is is what we get to work with here. Innovation, I believe to be the pursuit of what can be unburdened by what has been. Innovation results in one's ability not only to see, but to do things differently. New methods, new products, new approaches, new ideas. We innovate to be more effective And to solve problems. Ladies and gentlemen, we are screwed. (laughs) That was our vice president, folks. I have no idea what she just said. It's like she's a fourth grader trying to make up words for an essay. It's like a fourth or fifth grader that knows they have a 500 word essay they have to finish and they only have two hours to finish it. And so they just start using all kinds of filler words. That is what Kamala Harris sounds like every time she speaks. She is not even in the United States right now. She's going to like three or four other countries and doing these speeches. It's absolutely crazy. It's like I heard one reporter say Nobody in America likes her, so she had to leave and go to other countries where they actually like her. I mean, (laughs) folks, I can point to example after example of why we are in such a bad position right now and why this Donald Trump indictment is nothing but a distraction. So the last thing I wanted, the last thing I wanted to talk about was in that in that speech that Glenn Beck gave on Tucker Carlson, he was talking about the collapse of our currency. And I know a lot of people have been hearing about the collapse of the SVB bank and what all that really means. And I'm sure you kind of know by now that it's not good. Well, it's not good, folks. And basically what we're experiencing right now is essentially the collapse of the U.S. dollar. And I don't know if it's I, – I never knew it would to be possible until now. So I got an article here. Uh, titled, Could the U.S. Dollar Collapse? Says, wow, that's a big statement. If you're someone from Argentina, Venezuela, or Russia, you understand the realities of what can happen when your home currency fails. It's a big deal, and it can cause immense financial damage to the economy and individuals. Folks, isn't this crazy that we're reading articles comparing the United States to Venezuela and Argentina or even Russia? Like, That's how far down we are right now, folks. That is the level of disparity the Joe Biden administration has brought this country. We are literally talking about being on par with Argentina and Venezuela as far as our economy and our currency. (laughs) So I just I want to finish this article and I want to give you guys a little bit of hope at the end. Okay. But is it actually realistic to think that the U.S. dollar, the world's reserve currency, could collapse too? Look, we'll cut right to the chase. It's unlikely, but it's not impossible. (laughs) Nothing is in the world of money and finance. For investors, it's important to understand the potential outcomes that could impact their finances, even if they're unlikely. So in this article, we're going to walk you through what actually happens when a currency collapses how it could impact investors, and what they could do to protect against it. This was from Forbes.com 
obviously Forbes is a uh, investor. It's a finance website. So hyperinflation. When hyperinflation occurs, every dollar becomes less valuable. $10 might buy you a 12 case of Pepsi today, and then tomorrow, that same $10 only buys you six Pepsis. I think I've been noticing that right now. You can literally go to the store, and prices are increasing by the day. By the day, you can see items increasing in price daily, weekly. It's crazy. Look at butter. The next time you go to the store, look at butter. That has probably increased the most. Why butter? I have no idea. But butter has went from like $2 and something, $3, to like $7, $8. Same with eggs. And ladies and gentlemen, it's not getting cheaper. It's not stopping. We are dealing with like 6% compound inflation right now, which means every year that item increases 6% more year over year over year. So in two years time, 6% is 12%. Okay. So what, whatever an item cost two years later at a 6% annual inflation is going to be 12% more expensive in two years time. Ladies and gentlemen, we are reaching levels of economic disparity that we have not seen in, in a long time. It blows 2008 out of the water. So anybody comparing this to 2008 is lying to you. Okay, political instability. While not something we expect to see in the U.S., governments can be overthrown. When there is a military coup, a war, or another event resulting in political upheaval, a country's currency can often be a casualty. I don't know. kind of seems like we're going to war right now. So I just read you that article. Uh, basically saying that we are in the on the brink of, of World War III. I, I don't know how else to put it. We have government contractors over there fighting for Ukraine. We are draining our stockpile, our munition stockpile, okay, to critically low levels. You have Russia, China, Iran combining forces to, to form an alliance. And let's not forget about little midget man over there, North Korea. Let's not forget about him. He's in there, too, flaunting his nuclear weapons off. So we're not in a good position right now, folks. And so a collapse of a dollar is certainly in the realm when we look at it from that angle. So high debt. Many countries have high levels of debt these days, but this is all relative to the strength of the underlying economy. When a country has very high debt and a shrinking economy, this can cause a flight of assets and a collapse of the currency. Bingo. We're in that right now. So, so far, we're three for three right now, folks. Hyperinflation, political instability, and high debt. Um, there are just a few examples of high debt. Others include trade imbalances, loss of status as a global reserve currency, and natural disasters of war, all of them related to instability within a country. As the currency is reflective of the global financial system, trust in that country. Okay, the U.S. dollar special status. Unlike any other country in the world, the U.S. dollar has a special place in the global financial system. That's because it is the global reserve currency. That means that it is considered as the safest currency there is, with many other countries keeping U.S. dollars in reserve. Well, folks, I hate to tell you this, but here we go. New global currency designed to ditch U.S. dollar coming from BRICS. Nations report a group of economically aligned nations plan to create a new currency that could reduce the world's dependence on the U.S. dollar and the euro, according to a new report. This was April 1st is when this report came out. The group of emerging economies known collectively as BRICS, B-R-I-C-S, are exploring how such a currency would be structured. The new dollar alternative could be backed by gold, additional rare earth metals, or something else entirely, says State Duma Deputy Chairman Alexander Bakov. The acronym BRICS stands for the countries of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. A number of additional nations, including Saudi Arabia, Argentina, Iran, Indonesia, Turkey, and Egypt, have reportedly expressed interest in joining the alliance. The upcoming BRICS summit is set for August 22nd in South Africa. Well, there you go, folks. That looks like we're, I don't know, four for four now on the ways U.S. currency could collapse. So that was the U.S. dollar special special status. Well, that's gone. 
So, so the bottom line here is currencies can and do collapse, but it is not a minor event. When a currency collapses, it's down to a significant economic or political event in a country that has a huge impact on its citizens. It's not a likely outcome at all in most countries around the world, and that's particularly true for the United States. This is down to the U.S. dollar status as the global reserve currency. Well, folks, we are losing that status as we speak with all these other countries. So, Democrats, are you happy now that you got us into this mess? How does it feel that you essentially voted for your own destruction? How do you feel about voting for Joe Biden again? Glenn Beck, at the end of this speech, when he said that the American people will crawl over broken glass and through flames to pull that lever for Donald Trump, I absolutely believe him and I absolutely think he's right now. Because the the, United, the people can only withstand so much, folks. People can only handle so much pain and misery. And only when the pain is too great will people change. Only at the precipice do people find the will to change. It's the same thing as a drug addict, folks. Drug addicts will only change once they hit the precipice. And there's nobody that can pull them over. There's nothing they can do. The drug addicts have to find their will to change. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. But they absolutely have to hit rock bottom before they can pull themselves out. So folks, I'm telling you, we are entering some really dark days right now, and I want people to be I want people to be informed that this Trump indictment is a giant distraction from all of this. All this is a giant distraction. It is absolutely crazy. Do not fall for it because what's going to happen is, is people are going to be so glued to a Trump indictment that's not going to go anywhere. It's going to end up at the, at the latest in appeals court around election time. And Donald Trump is once again for the 15th time going to be found innocent. And then they can move on to their next persecution. I think people need to understand right now that these people will never stop. They will not stop. They have a target on Donald Trump, and these people are like animals, man. These people are insane. These people are psychologically and mentally broken. They are emotionally broken people. So they're never going to stop coming after Trump. So I want my listeners to understand you got to stay cool. Just keep your cool. Don't do anything crazy. If you want to protest, absolutely go protest. I imagine the crowds are going to be huge in New York. But from what I read, they're going to have whole city blocks blocked off from any kind of crowd or anything. Because another thing people have to remember is Donald Trump is still the former president and he still has Secret Service for life. So his Secret Service, their one job is to make sure that that president is safe. So they are not going to allow anything to happen to him, and they absolutely are not going to allow a rogue district attorney that wants 15 minutes of fame and to and to have a political movement to use this as a political bludgeon, you know, as a political weapon to bludgeon his political opponents. They're not going to allow this escapade to put the president's life in danger. So there's not going to be handcuffs. Donald Trump is not going to be in any handcuffs. Donald Trump is not going to be perp walked. Okay, we already know this. So this is not going to be like a routine indictment. It's not going to be like a routine booking. They're going to get a mugshot, which I hope Donald Trump smiles bigger than he's ever smiled in his life. And then he should use that mugshot as a campaign promotion. He should use that mugshot, put it on T-shirts and spread it all throughout the country and sell them. That's what he should do. Sell them as campaign T-shirts. That's what he should do with this mugshot. He'll get his fingerprints the whole nine yards. But this is what they want, folks. All they want is fingerprints and a mugshot so that everybody can change their Facebook profile image to Donald Trump's mugshot. It's it's really – but the thing is, is the progressives, these insane leftists, are never happy and they never stop. So once this is over, they're going to move right on to the next – to the next escapade, which is probably going to be Georgia lawsuit. He's got like two other lawsuits that he's dealing with right now, which are bogus too. They're going to lead to the same thing. You know, the one in Georgia is when he told the governor to find votes. 
Folks, that's not a crime, okay? Telling a governor to find votes is not a crime. He didn't say manufacture votes. He said find votes, okay? It's not a crime because there has to be something there to find. You see what I'm saying? So it's that's a bogus legal theory they're trying to move there too. So all of this is nothing but a distraction to distract the people from the failures of the Democrat Party and the Joe Biden administration and all the corruption happening in the Biden family. There's the we have the House Oversight Committee still looking into the Joe Biden case. They have more details coming out about the bank accounts linked to the Biden family uh wired to Robert Walker, I think his name is, and Robert Walker split the money between the Biden family. There was Haley Biden, Joe Biden, Jim Biden, and a fourth person labeled just Biden. I think we all know who that fourth Biden is, and so they're just going to have to piece that together. But So when these people tell you that nobody's above the law, what they're trying to say is nobody on the Republicans. No Republican is above the law. That's what they're trying to say. This is some crazy Soviet Union stuff that they did back in the day where the mob got around. They would arrest people, put them in the street, and then let the and let the mob beat them uh, sometimes to death. As they're screaming, nobody's above the law. They're beating the people to death in the streets. And that's what they did back in the Soviet Union. Kind of the same stuff we're seeing now. But well, unfortunately, these people don't even see it. They don't even see how how Stalinist they look, man. They they straight up look like a bunch of little tyrant, like a big tyrant mob is what they're is what they're trying to do. And another thing Glenn Beck added in there was the gun grabbing. They absolutely are trying to come for the AR-15, but Republicans aren't budging, folks. There's no way Kevin McCarthy is going to allow any kind of assault rifle ban or assault weapons ban. It's not going to happen. They're not getting the assault weapons. If you listen to my previous episode, I talked about some remedies that could be done, and I hope Republicans do the same thing. Ted Cruz came out with a bill that basically gave funds to schools to reinforce their school buildings, uh, metal detectors, so on and so forth, and to add additional resource officers and billions of dollars for mental health counselors in all the schools. And Senator Murphy from Connecticut stood up and objected the entire bill. So we can't take these people serious when it comes to any kind of gun reform. There doesn't need to be gun reform. What they need to do is just make these schools safer. That's all. Increase the safety and security at the schools. So I hope the Republicans come out with another bill again, and I would love for Democrats to object to it on live television in front of the entire nation. That's exactly what the Republicans should do. And then guess what? If they end up signing it and the bill gets through, schools become safer. Schools become more secure. So why Republicans wouldn't do this, I have no idea. I suspect they probably will. Um, last thing I wanted to talk about was, do you guys remember Joe Biden when he said that the American people were not going to be on the hook for this giant SVB bank collapse and the FDIC payments? So essentially, Joe Biden came out and said that the FDIC was going to pay for all the all the account holders over two hundred and fifty thousand. So normally FDIC only covers accounts up to two hundred and fifty thousand. That's what protects the consumer like me and you. That's so we don't lose all our money because this bank made mistakes. Okay, the banks all contribute money to put into the FDIC, and the FDIC has like I think like eighty eight billion or a hundred billion dollars for basically break glass in case of emergency kind of situations. What Joe Biden did was said, okay, all account holders and consumers, you'll get your 250000 back, but not only your 250000 we're going to give everything back to you. So no matter what it is, you're going to get it back. Well, folks, there's just not enough money. The FDIC can't handle all that. So there's only $88 billion or whatever the FDIC has. But you're talking about $1.5, $1.6 trillion. So guess what happens, folks? All that comes out of the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is going to have to flip the remainder of that bill. And guess what that means? The American taxpayer once again gets screwed by the Joe Biden administration. I have an audio clip here kind of explaining exactly what's happening. It's from E.J. Antoni, and he's basically a uh, financial guru. Here, check this out. Anybody who's a, uh, someone who had their money in this bank, he wants their deposits to be insured. Now, the FDIC insurance goes up to, what, a quarter million dollars, right? 
So, mm -hmm. th which that's part of the deal. FDIC, it got, was started under Roosevelt, if I remember right. Well, not personally remember, but remember studying. Um, and it was to avoid consumers being, you know, left high and dry. But first of all, he, the president said that people who did not qualify for FDIC insurance, they'll also have their deposits covered. How does that work? And how is that not a bailout? It, well, it is a bailout. And the fact that the Federal Reserve and others are saying that this is not going to cost taxpayers, I mean, that is laughable. It doesn't even pass the smell test. We are making good uh, uh, on, on these people's losses. That, by definition, is going to be a cost. And it's amazing that all of this happened virtually overnight. There was no executive action. There was certainly not an act by Congress to authorize this. This is an example of gross federal overreach, where we are guaranteeing the deposits of millionaires and billionaires who, who frankly, took risks that they shouldn't have. And there you go, folks. Another example that the Biden administration is completely lawless, acting as some kind of dictator, some kind of evil dictator, some kind of emperor, just spending taxpayer dollars that we don't have and that nobody approved in the dead of the night, and essentially spending taxpayer dollars for millionaires and billionaires. <laughs> so what kind of precedent is this going to set when millionaires and billionaires know that they could just screw up on whatever they want, make stupid investments, and know they're still going to get paid no matter what from the American taxpayer? This is without a doubt bailing out millionaires and billionaires. So you people want to sit there and tell me how Donald Trump was for the rich and Joe Biden was for the middle class? Yeah, right, folks. That I'm telling you, the entire Biden campaign was nothing but a lie. We are witnessing the exact opposite of everything Joe Biden said. He said he was going to govern as a moderate. He's an absolute radical. He said he was going to build back better. He's building back worse. He said he was for the middle working class. He is bailing out the rich and the millionaires and billionaires. He said he was going to help health care. He absolutely did not. Everybody's premiums went up because of Obamacare. And he didn't fix that. He said he was going to help the pharmaceutical prices. He absolutely did nothing of the such, has not helped anything. He said the Inflation Reduction Act was going to reduce inflation. That was a complete lie. The entire thing was a lie from the very beginning. It was never intended to be an Inflation Reduction Act. It was intended to be a climate change bill for his radical base. And so that was just $1.2 trillion that we spent that we didn't have, which increased inflation. So there you go, folks. To get an idea of kind of people we're dealing with, you had an Inflation Reduction Act bill that actually increased inflation. And somehow, some way, Democrats think this is progress. Well, Democrats, I'm sorry, but if you think this is progress, we really need to have a talk because this is not progress. This is a degress. So you're degressing the country. So I just hope Democrats out there that are listening to this, I hope, I hope you think this was worth it. I hope you learned your lesson out of this. I really do. Because in, in two years time, I just hope you don't make the same mistakes. And I hope by then we can maybe, maybe get some things back to normal. And I just hope by then we're not in some kind of crazy World War Three. So that was it, folks. That's all I got for today. I wanted to, I hope I slammed in enough, uh, enough information there in an hour or so. I wanted to do a few topics just because I haven't been on in a couple days. I wanted to give you guys some stuff to absorb. And, um, also, I have some information. A Quinnipiac poll says that six out of 10 Americans are worse off now than they were before Joe Biden. So if that tells you anything, I don't know. That sounds a little bit low to me. I want to know how four out of 10 people are better off now than they were during the Trump administration. That is beyond me because I, I would imagine everybody's doing pretty bad right now, except the rich people. But folks, even the rich people are spending a lot more money on stuff. And and all those price increases get passed down to the consumer, us. And once again, Democrats and leftists have no idea how any of this stuff works. They don't know anything. Democrats and leftists don't know anything about anything. 
So that's why we got to stop listening to these people. I, I wouldn't even take them serious. If they weren't so dangerous, I, I, I would say we can just ignore them. But these people have taken this stuff way, way overboard, man, with the with the indictments and the political persecutions of their political opponents and the weaponization of the justice system, the weaponization of the state. You know, we have like police state now where you you have – oh, another thing I wanted to say is – this guy that made a meme, I can't even remember what his name is. You remember that guy that had a meme? He sent out a meme of Hillary Clinton back in the 2016 election. Um, what was his name? Let me see here. Douglas Mackey was convicted for a vote by tweet meme. <laughs> if you guys, if Democrats want to sit there and say that we're not entering a tyrannical totalitarian regime, I want you to explain to me how somebody can get arrested, prosecuted, and convicted for a meme that he sent out on Twitter, okay? This guy sent a meme of essentially basically telling people that they can vote by vote by text, and nobody did it, so they couldn't find one person. They couldn't find one person that actually – voted that actually text there were a bunch of people text the number and that's what they used to convict the guy they couldn't find one person that that this impacted and so that's a real problem folks when you have this this government under the Biden administration this justice system under the Joe Biden administration arresting prosecuting and convicting people for memes on Twitter we have some serious issues so I wanted to squeeze that in there somewhere. I meant to talk about that earlier. That was one of my examples of how this country is doing a nosedive uh, like we've never seen before and how this country is falling apart right now. But all they want you to do is focus on Donald Trump. That's what they want. Don't worry about everything else collapse, collapsing around you. Just focus on the Donald Trump indictment, which is some bogus rag indictment everybody knows is garbage. Everybody knows it is. Even the left and Democrats know it's garbage, but they're just hoping that this guy can, I don't know, like squeeze enough arms, you know, to apply enough. Well, what's going to happen is, is the mob is going to go out in force and they're going to intimidate this judge. They're going to intimidate the jury. And then they're, that's how they're going to try and get this man. They're going to try and get a conviction by pressuring the jury and the judge. That's what these people do. You've seen this in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. You know, if it wasn't for that judge. Kyle Rittenhouse would be gone, folks. That judge clearly, clearly could see right through the BS and seen exactly what was happening. But that Kyle Rittenhouse trial is a perfect example of the kind of trial we're going to have with Donald Trump. The only difference is that was in Wisconsin. So you're going to have a mob of New Yorkers. This is going to be in New York. The only difference is, is this is going to be in New York that vote 9 out of 10 Democrat, probably with the leftist jury pool and a leftist judge. We know it's a leftist judge. It's, I think, an Obama appointee that already ruled against Donald Trump in a lawsuit that his company had. So, yeah, this is going to be a fair trial, folks. Mm -hmm. Sure it is. Folks, they need to try and get this trial out of New York City. I wonder how the leftists would react if they moved the trial to, say, Texas or Florida. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you guys think it would still be – you think the left would think it's going to be a fair trial? Listen, the entire time this trial is going on, pay attention. You're going to be like, oh, this judge is amazing. There's absolutely no bias here. This is a real down-to-earth judge and the jury. My, man, they are doing a great job. They're just focusing. I'm sure none of them have any kind of bias. They, they are really – down to earth when it comes to the law. You move this trial to Florida and you wait and see the reaction out of the left. They will lose their freaking minds, man, if you move this trial down to Florida. And I think that's exactly what the, the lawyers should try and do. But they seem to think they're going to have this thing dismissed in no time. So I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. Alvin Bragg still has the indictment sealed, which is kind of weird. They say I, I'm not a lawyer, so they say it's kind of weird for it's not very common to keep the indictment sealed. If you're going to indict somebody, they kind of release the indictment like right away so they can see what the charges are. But of course, this isn't going to be a normal trial, folks. We are dealing with a political witch hunt here. We are dealing with a political witch hunt and the henchmen are out for blood. So... That's all I got for today, folks. Thank you for tuning in. I um I, I want I want to tell you guys, do not give up. 
They're trying to crush your morale. Just do not give up, okay? Donald Trump's poll number skyrocketed after that indictment. There was a new poll that came out yesterday, I believe, that that just absolutely dominates the pollings right now, even in a Joe Biden, Donald Trump head to head again. But again, you know, Democrats cheat in elections. So it doesn't it, it can't just be Donald Trump is close. This has to be a landslide, folks. I hope Glenn Beck is right. And I hope and pray to God that 100 million people come out and vote for Donald Trump. That would be glorious. It would be the biggest middle finger that the American people could give to the establishment. It would be the biggest middle finger that the average working man, the average American citizen could give to the elite establishment. All these leftists and Democrats talk about taxing the elites and how they want to take down the system. They want they want to tax the elites to death that there's everybody should be equal and basically they want to bring the billionaires and millionaires down and they don't like the elites. When I was a Democrat, we were not elitists, folks. When I was a Democrat, we hated the elites. You know, it's and and that's why I'm politically that's what left me politically homeless. Now the Democrats support the elites. They support the system. They support the government. They support the FBI. They support the CIA. They support the system because it's beneficial to them because the system is after you. Thank you for tuning in. If you guys have any questions, you can get a hold of me at Stephen Yellow Show at gmail.com. That's Stephen Yellow Show at gmail.com. Just let me know how I did. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know what you think of the show. And uh, I'm probably going to try and get another episode out uh, tomorrow. I- I'm I'm going to try and do an every other day thing here if I can do. I'm going to take one day in research. I'm going to take the next day to record and edit and all that good stuff and post. But um, – you can also find me on Facebook. You can find me on TikTok. You can find me on Twitter. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope uh, I hope I got the message out there to you today. I wanted to let you guys know, do not fall for the trap. This is all a distraction. Stay focused, and I want you guys to focus on the failures of the Biden administration, the Democrat Party, and the Biden family corruption. Stay focused. Do not lose focus. That's what they want to do. So again, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you share the show with your friends and family, and you guys have a good day. Have a good week. God bless you, and God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.